In 2003, some very unusual folks from the Amish community came down to Iron City, Tennessee to build a health center for the ministry here at Butler Creek. This is the story. My name is Lou Keith. I'm standing here in Iron City, Tennessee. It's September 2018. A cool day today. Leaves are falling, a little breeze blowing, kind of cloudy. I got my jacket on. Uh, you can tell winter's just around the corner. But the Lord, you know, He answers prayers in very mysterious ways. Back in 1999, Wildwood Lifestyle Center Hospital asked my wife and me to come over and begin a health ministry. So we came over, moved into the only existing structure on the land, which was an old farmhouse that was uh, unfurnished. And we had very little money. We had no staff. We had no guests. Nobody knew we were here. And of course, when you don't know what to do, you know what to do. So we prayed. But I went and got some old boards off a barn. The barn was falling down. Pulled some white oak uh, boards off the side of the barn. Built a kitchen table. Went up to the Dollar General, bought a couple of green plastic chairs. We sat down to have our lunch, and we prayed. And said, Lord, <laughs> you know, we're done for. There's no chance of success unless you intervene and help us. Now, looking back over the last 20 years, as I recall what God's done in the past, there's no need to fear for the future. But it's nice to keep in remembrance the, the good things God's done. That way it helps us to uh, keep that trust level nice and high. So the Lord is good, and I'm going to share what He did to provide for us a health center, which at the time I didn't know we needed, but now I can see it's just the thing that the ministry needed, and He sent it at just the right time. In 1993, Darlene and I, we joined the staff at Wildwood Lifestyle Center Hospital. And so we were attending one of the Friday night meetings sometime that first year or two, and a man came in to the meeting. He had been in the penitentiary up in Indiana, and he was now uh, striving to give his life to Christ. And we began to talk at the worship service and kind of got to know each other. And then years and years later, once Darlene and I had moved to Iron City to start the ministry here, uh, he gave me a call. Said he had a couple of young men up there that needed some help. Could he send them down as our guest? And I said, sure. So he sent these two men down, young men, and uh, God gave them new hearts, gave them a good experience. They went back to Indiana. Well. This brother was uh, driving Amish people. As part of his work, he drove the Amish people from place to place because they don't drive cars, they drive buggies. He shared with them about the ministry here and they made a decision to come down and build us a health center and they said they could do it in two and a half days. So when I got the call from uh, Ben Graber, he was kind of organizing it. I think I hung the phone up the first time. I, I couldn't believe it, too good to be true. He called back and uh, it was a little more serious the second time around. And I told him, I said, Ben, we, we don't have any workers. We don't have any, I mean, we don't have any builders. Uh, we have very small staff. We have no finances. We have no money. And we just all these reasons why it's not going to work. And Ben said, well, I got like 9, 10, 11 brothers. One owns a door factory. One owns a window factory. One owns a sawmill. We'll give you everything you need at cost and we'll send it down to you. We'll ship it down. And I, uh, you know, I thought that was fine. I said, but we don't have any money. And he didn't seem to dwell on that for very long. And so he told me, what you need to do before we can come down is you need to build a foundation wall. And that's where the building sits. And he said, when you have that, you call me back and we'll, we'll get the plan in operation. So I, I did something I'd never done in my life. I called the lady. She's now uh, resting in Christ, Ruth Potts. And this lady had shown an interest in her ministry. I called her and told her, uh, I said, Ruth, <laughs> I was very nervous. I said, we're trying to build a foundation wall for our health center. Amish folks are gonna come down and build it for us, but I need $2,500. And she said, it's in the mail. That it, she said, it's in the mail. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. And so I got the money. And of course that was just for materials, the block, the concrete, and just the materials. And uh, I got a call from a family up in the UP, Upper Peninsula. They said they would come down and lay the block for us. I don't know how they heard about our need, but they said they would come down and lay the block. Of course, before you lay the block, the block sit on top of something called a footing, a concrete pad. And we didn't have that. But the man driving the Amish people in Indiana had a brother that could do uh, uh, 
layout work. You know, so he brought his 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 his, uh, his tools, his equipment, to lay out the foundation and help us to pour the footing. His name was Kevin, and he was a, a very nice man. So he came down. We got one of our lifestyle guests. We got some shovels, and Kevin laid it out. We began to dig the footing, and then we had a uh, concrete truck come and pour the footing, and got the block. And the folks there from uh, Michigan arrived to lay the block. Turned out it was a husband and wife and son team and she could lay block as well as they could. And they began to lay the block and you know, it took about three, four, five days. And at the end of that time, the block was finished. So I got on the phone, called Ben Graber in Michigan, I'm sorry, in Indiana. And I said, uh, we're ready, the foundation's ready. And I think we're, uh, we're, we're as ready as we'll ever be. And Ben said, I'll start mailing down the building. Cause I wondered how they were gonna get it from Indiana, which is a 10 hour drive from here. He said, I'll start mailing the building down. And then it began to arrive, not in envelopes, but trucks. One truck after another truck, after another truck, after another truck. I had the joists and some had the rafters and some had the sheathing. And, but slowly the uh, materials began to assemble around the, the, the site of the health center. And then once everything arrived, I confirmed everything you sent us here. He said, we'll be down there Tuesday morning, five o'clock in the morning, and we're gonna begin to build. I said, well, okay. And so on Tuesday at five o'clock, I was down by the mailbox waiting for uh, the Amish folks. And ben told me there are two groups coming, an older group and a younger group. And I didn't know anything about Amish people. Uh, I, I thought, you know, something about driving buggies, they don't shave, they wear black hats. But I had no personal knowledge of what they believed. I'd never met an Amish person before. So Tuesday at five o'clock in the morning, I'm standing down there waiting for the old group and the young group. And the blessings the Lord gave us during those two and a half days, it's, uh, it's something only God can do. So at the appointed time, I was up at the road at five o'clock in the morning and expecting uh, two vans, some old guys and some young guys. First van drove up and some uh, the children jumped out. <laughs> and of course, I thought they were the children, but actually uh, those were the builders. Uh, they, I said good morning, they walked right past me and they put their tool belts on, got up on the wall, and started to build a structure. I think their ages were about 14, 16, 17, 18, 21, something like that. And so a short while later, a second van came up. A second van was the old guys. Uh, the oldest of the old guy was like 35 years old. So my, my part was to, if they needed something, I got it for them, I would hand them tools, and I worked with them. And at night, after a long day of work, I asked them, well, you know, you must want to go to bed early. They were staying in Earl Health Center. And they said, no, we'd really like to study the Bible. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And I found out that Amish people are Bible-based Christians. They're just precious people. We made some really good friends. So in the daytime, we built. The nighttime, we studied. They would ask questions, you know, what are angels? Are they real? What happens when you die? Is uh, What is the mark of the beast? Just these different questions. And we would study. I'd say, well, this is what the Bible said. So in, a, in that short time, made some uh, good friends. So by the second day, the walls were taking shape and everything was going up. And it was, uh, it was a miracle before my very eyes. And as we worked, you know, I was able to talk and share a little bit about hydrotherapy. While we were building, uh, some of the Amish men, the older ones, brought their wives with them. And so the wives and the children were with Darlene in the house and she was sharing with them about cooking, some uh, how to make bread. They were very interested in health. So we, uh, we continued to work. Uh, during that time, one of them injured their finger. I was able to tape it up and do a little uh, medical missionary work. And after the third day, when the morning of the third day came, we were putting the roof on, then the windows, and then the doors, and there it was. And as Ben was, uh, they were packing up the tools, you know, I knew we didn't have the money to pay him. We had, a, somebody had given us a couple of donations. We had a very small amount, but we had $500 in the bank and a savings account. And I told Ben, I said, why don't, uh, why don't I give you this at least as a, as a token, as a gift for somebody up there that needs help? He looked at me and he said, you know, you need it worse than we do. <laughs> I said, well, Ben, if, uh, if we need it, God can give it right back to us. And of course he took it. As I handed him the check for $500, 
one of the Amish men sent me an envelope, came into my hand, and it said donation from one of the Amish brothers. I opened it up. I said, well, Ben, guess how much it is? He, he said, no, not $500. And I pulled it out, it was $500. I told Ben, God gave it back as soon as we handed it to you. And I've watched God do that for the last 20 years. You know, we, we run by grace. And without God's grace, we wouldn't make it even a day. So they packed up, got in the vans, and headed back to Indiana. And I stood there, I looked at the health center, and I thought, God has certainly given us a gift. And if He gave us the gift, He must have a plan for us to use it. So today we've been in a health center uh, since 2003. This is 2018. We've been in that health center for the last 15 years. And many, many miracles have been done by God to change hearts, to draw souls to Christ. And it continues, even today, to be a, uh, a platform for sharing the health message and the gospel truth. Once the Amish people return home, well, we owed them a lot of money for that building. And in the beginning, they kind of, they minimized the fact that we'd owe them a lot of money when it was finished. But once it was done, they got back to Indiana, they sent me a bill, which is what they said they would do. They sent me a bill to frame the building up as $35,000. We owed uh, quite a bit of that. But when the bill came in the mail, it had stamped on it, paid in full, your friends the Amish.